started boxing when I was seven years old. Um, I was already kind of uh, passionate about the sport at a very uh, young age. I was about three years old when I was kind of introduced to the sport. Um, that uh, came about my, my father, who was a big boxing fan. I mean, we're Puerto Rican, so uh, boxing in Puerto Rico is huge. It's like a national sport. So, um, you know, boxing was always on at, at the, uh, on the TV at the house. So, uh, you know, it's something that I kind of fell in love with at an, early, at an early age. And then I finally told my dad at seven years old that I wanted to start boxing. And then he took me to a gym, uh, the United Community Center back home in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, uh, and yeah, that's how I got started. And then, uh, you know, I never stopped after that. And, uh, and that's what kind of started the whole journey. Can you pinpoint an exact moment or a fight when you knew this is something that you wanted to do professionally or you really fell in love with the sport when you were when you were doing it? Yeah, that I think that started around when I was like 13, 14 years old. So um, right when I started, I think, uh, yeah, right when I started high school, I was always involved in different sports, um, baseball and basketball specifically, aside from boxing. I think that when I entered high school, I was debating whether to enter the baseball team and, uh, for my high school or uh, just to stick to boxing and uh, prepare for a big national tournament that was coming up. And that's what I decided to do. I was like, you know what? I'm going to focus on, on this boxing uh, tournament, which was the Junior Olympics at that time. And uh, that's kind of when everything kind of clicked. Uh, when I started focusing on boxing and all of a sudden I started winning national championships. Uh, a few years later, I'm over here, I'm making the national teams and, and uh, you know, and winning gold medals at these, at, at these national tournaments. And I was uh, among the best in the country. So I think that's when everything kind of opened up for me and I realized that I could do it at the professional level and, uh, and here I am. Well, you talk about your dad and I can tell that your family means the absolute world to you. How have they really guided you through this journey? Oh, they definitely guided me. I mean, uh, they are, uh, they play a big impact in my, in my career, obviously my life too, but you know, obviously with my boxing career as well. Um, me and my dad, I mean, I consider him like my best friend. Uh, he's helped me start this journey of, you know, being a professional boxer and, um, and they mean the world to me. I mean, there's they've always there. They guided me. I mean, also with even with school, uh, when I uh, you know I'm a Marquette graduate, so um, them guided me and you know uh, making sure that I, I go through that first, and then you know I have my professional career as well. So they've been a big influence of that. How uh, they've raised me, you know, and and everything, my character, everything that I have comes from them. So I mean, for me, it's a it's it's a big reason why I'm the person that I am today. And uh, and every single time that I step in the ring, I try I, I represent my, my family. Well, I saw this photo of you when you went to your nephew's birthday. What is it like to have a little boy like that look at you and idolize you? Oh, I, I mean, it makes me feel good. I mean, that's the only, that's kind of like the only thing I have. I mean, I don't have no kids of myself, but, uh, but that's, you know, that's almost like a son to me, you know, um, that's, it's only me and my sister. Uh, out of you know out of the uh, out of my siblings so um so it's just us two so that you know it's you know it means the world to me and he uh you know I always stay in touch with him even though I'm you know kind of far away I'm here in Las Vegas and there in Milwaukee so um so you know I don't get to see him uh in person as much but uh we always stay in contact and you know it, it's you know if anything happens to you know my sister to my family I'm the one that's gonna have to be there so you know, for me, that having that relationship with him is very important. So I love my little nephew. Well, the one thing that really stood out to me about you as well, what you mentioned before, is that you went to Marquette. But it wasn't just that you went to college. You graduated. And at the same time, you were training and fighting, working a little bit. And I'm sure throw a social life if you could. But how were you able to manage all of that? It was very difficult. I mean, I would say that's definitely one of the most difficult things that I've had to endure. Just with the with the with the class load that I had to take, and then you know having to compete at, at the highest level uh, as as far as an amateur. You know, because uh, even the year that I graduated and I walked the stage, I was on the national team. I was on the Pan American team that very year. You know, so uh, it was very difficult. But I think that that's something that uh, that I uh, that taught me a lot about myself about my character, about my work ethic. You know, it was just kind of those things where I had to bite down and get through it. And uh, I'm glad I went through it because, uh, you know, there's not many people that could uh, that, that could do that. So um, I'm glad that I got through it. I mean, it was obviously a great experience too. I mean, 
you know, graduating from a great school like Marquette, and then at the same time uh, representing the U.S. Uh, in international competition at one of the biggest stages. I mean, I think that that says a lot. Yeah, well, I think the biggest difference, too, with you is that you didn't have the NCAA backing you and saying, hey, you have study hours this time or you had to do this this time. You had to discipline yourself. So why did you value your education so much? Well, I think uh, this is go- goes back to, uh, you know, uh, my parents and, and, and them guiding me because I, I know that it was very important for me to uh, to graduate from college, have a backup plan. I mean, boxing is, uh, I always tell people, boxing is obviously a dangerous sport and anything can happen. And not only inside the ring, but also outside the ring. Anything can happen that uh, all of a sudden my career is over. So at least I have something to, to back up on. And um, and I, I'm glad I did it. And then also I wanted to be the very first person in my family to graduate from college. I think that that means a, a lot to me. And it also you know means a lot to my parents who they're no different than you know any other uh, ethnic group that, you know, they come here to the United States for a better future for their kids, for themselves. And, uh, and, you know, I had the opportunity to go to Marquette and, you know, and I got the job done. So I think that that's very, uh, just something to be very proud of as far as accomplishing that. Well, I've heard you talk about being a leader and wanting to continue to be a leader. And I've seen that you've spoke at school, spoke to your community. Why have you wanted to use your platform for a better purpose? Well, yeah, I think it's important to give back, especially the youth, uh, you know, to people that share those same road or same backgrounds as you. Um, you know, it's not easy for us, you know, so we have to kind of go sometimes the extra mile, you know, some we're, we're not as privileged as other people. So, um, so I think that, uh, you know, having, you know, sharing our experiences and perspectives can, you know, can, can definitely help out at, at those bigger platforms, help spread, you know, uh, our voice. And like, like I said, our experiences and perspectives so that, you know, it can motivate people and drive people and inspire people. So I think that that's very important. And that's why I always, I try to, you know, give back, um, the best way I can, whether it's talking to somebody, it may not be monetary, it might not be, you know, any other form, but just, you know, just uh, communicating through, you know, through, through and using those platforms is a very important way that I could kind of give back. Well, can you walk us through a typical training day, especially getting ready for this fight right now? Yeah, so um, sometimes it varies um, day by day, week by week. But uh, normally Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it'll start with uh, with uh, morning uh, uh, road work, cardio work, and then in the afternoons, I'll have sometimes I'll have my sparring days, or those usually technical days where we work on technique, and then uh, same thing on uh, on Tuesday and Thursday, but that'll be in the afternoon. So that'll be either the sparring session or the technical work will be in the afternoon, and then in the evenings, I have my strength and conditionings. Uh, and then on Saturday will either consist of a mountain run, a very hard run, or it will con- uh, it'll consist of a uh, strength conditioning day. And then Sundays are recovery days. People don't realize that actually recovery is just as important as the hard work itself. So, um, so there's those days are very important. But that's pretty much a typical week for uh, for me as far as training wise. Well, looking back at your last fight, that was the first time that you have ever been knocked down in your career. You know, after watching it back and analyzing everything, what do you think was your biggest takeaway from that? Uh, no, I mean it was uh, definitely uh, surprising. It was, uh, you know, shocking. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, definitely uh, an experience that it was, you know, very surprising for me because I've never been in that situation, not as an amateur and obviously not as a professional. But um, but I think that those are the moments that we learn the most. Um, you know, something, you know just making adjustments to avoid that and and you know and in the next fights and stuff but you know sometimes you gotta get you gotta get knocked down because you gotta see you know where you at as far as this you know uh your heart and and and, and your determination and your will to to get up and continue fighting you know and uh that's a metaphor that you could kind of apply to anything <laughs> in life but uh but you know, it's definitely it was a you know it, it's an experience that I think that eventually it, 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 it had to go down and you know it happened at that moment. Uh, the good thing is that we uh, responded well, we got up and we still fought back and and got the win. The sport of boxing comes with so many challenges and sacrifices. But what do you think has been the biggest one for you so far? I think just being away from my family. Um, I think that's probably been the biggest sacrifice. You know, I've been out uh, well, away from home, I, I'd say, for about six, seven years now. 
Wow. So, uh, you know, and that's when I started uh, my professional career, you know, uh, going to school in Marquette and then right after graduating later that year, I would end up in California, you know, so it's kind of those things where, you know, I didn't really expect that, you know, um, but it was things that, you know, it's things, it's, it's, it's moves that you have to make in order to, uh, you know, to, to follow your dreams and, and, and accomplish your goals. So it's something that I, uh, you know, decided to do and, and, um, and sometimes, uh, you know, uh, getting away from your comfort zone is also good for you, um, you know, and, and it just uh, makes you focus more. But I would say that's probably the biggest sacrifice that I've had to make in my career, just being away from family. There's times where you, uh, well, I should say just times, there's a lot of times where, you know, you're homesick, uh, it's the holidays and, you know, you're having to go through the, you know, grueling schedule of trainings and, and all that and even cutting weight. Uh, during holidays and stuff like that, that you just end up missing out on, on, you know, family time and even, you know, things that you go through your personal life that, you know, you, you don't have anybody to talk to, um, you know, because they're far away. You know, it's obviously different being, you know, speaking to somebody through FaceTime or through the phone in comparison to, you know, having them there with you. And, and, and you know, so it's, it's you know, things like that. But uh, I'd say that's definitely my biggest sac- uh, sacrifice that I've had to make is just being away from family. So that's why I definitely cherish every time that I'm uh, close with them or when I'm back home. Looking back on your career so far, what do you think you've learned about yourself, not only as a fighter, but as a person as well? Man, that's a deep question. (laughs) Um, uh, I think I would say just just my work ethic, um, uh, having a, I think that kind of started with uh, with my Marquette days, uh, when I, uh, had to, you know, when I, when I had my trainings and then, you know, having to go to school, that was very tough. It's kind of something that I had to just kind of buckle down and, and, and grow through. Um, so in the mornings I had to wake up. So normally I had like an 8 a.m. class, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I remember clearly it was my senior year. And so, uh, so I had to train in the morning because I had a big workload and then my trainings in the afternoon after, after class. So, uh, so then I would have to wake up super early. This is, I'm talking about like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. Just to, just to train. And then right after training, I go straight to, straight to class, you know, at 8 a.m. So, um, so those are things that, you know, just, uh, I think that th- that they'll build a lot as far as character and, and, uh, developing a routine and, uh, and just having that mentality that I'm a, I'm a go getter, you know, I'm just being self determined and, 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 and getting things done. I mean, you know, they, you have to, you know, you just have to go and do it. You know, a lot of people kind of uh, have this, have this, uh, have this doubt that, you know, in their, in their heads where they can't get, you know, get to accomplish things. Sometimes you just got to get up and do it, period. You know, where there's no excuses. So that was one of those things where, you know, it's either I do it or I don't, you know, and, and, and I did it. So I think that helped. Uh, that's something that I apply now and, you know, and, you know, and it's now it's kind of like routine. It's instinct. It's habitual. So, so yeah. So that I, I'd say that's uh, that was something very valuable that I've learned uh, throughout my career. Well, we can talk about all your accolades and accomplishments, you know, all day long. But at the end of the day, who is Luis Feliciano? Uh, Luis Feliciano, man. I just always consider myself just a just a guy trying to uh, trying to accomplish his dreams. Uh, I, you know, I don't try to make myself bigger than who I am um you know and people know this people that know me know this um you know I always try to uh, stay true to myself uh, I always believe that being humble is is very important to to who I am and my character that you know that that I've learned through through my family through my dad specifically so you know I always try to you know just maintain that and uh you know I'm just a I'm just a I'm just a kid trying to trying to you know accomplish my dreams you know and my dreams of always been big but that hasn't stopped me um you know i've been doing it yeah you know, i've been doing this since i was seven years old you know and it's gotten me to the to where i'm at right now and uh and i don't plan on stopping so i'd say that's that's what luis feliciano is well i know that ralph moses and then your trainer solace have really been in your corner but how have they made you a better person inside and outside the ring um, yeah, I, I give a lot of props to, you know, and, and, and respect to them because, uh, you know, they've always backed me, uh, supported me in my career, um, even when some others may have not, you know, they've always been there. So I give a huge tribute to them and, 
and they are you know not only a part of my team but i consider them family now i mean even we've had conversations where we talk about other things in life aside from boxing you know so uh so they you know they mean a lot to me obviously you know these are people that have backed me in my life and and you know and my family is very grateful for them as well you know so uh so i'm very appreciative of them very grateful and you know uh when i win they also win you know we're in this together kind of thing and and, and again you know they, i consider them more than just friends or you know or uh or uh, business you know like these are you know people that i consider family so i'm very grateful very supportive uh, very appreciative of well, you are going to be returning home to Milwaukee to fight on April 1st. The whole city is going to be chanting your name. I'm sure you've been dreaming about that for some time now. And now it's finally happening. What does that mean to you? Oh, uh, man, that means the world to me. I mean, to me, it's a dream come true. Um, I've always wanted to fight on a big stage back home. Um, you know, I, it seems like every year in my career, when my co professional career started, I was like, oh man, the possibility of this, you know, it's just very slim, uh, you know, Milwaukee, we're not talking about a huge boxing or just in general, uh, you know, uh, uh, a fight hub, you know, it's not like LA, Las Vegas or, you know, or New York, anything like this, but it's crazy how just, you know, uh, yeah, one door closes and when another one opens. And, uh, you know, that was the case with this, where, you know, we had a fight that uh, opponent pulled out. So uh, it was kind of back to square one. And then this opportunity opened up and uh, and all of a sudden here I am on the card and 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 having this opportunity to fight back home. Uh, it's I think it's a blessing. I seriously think it's a blessing. And and uh, I'm just going to do, you know, I've been working so hard for this and I'm going to do my best to, you know, to put on a show and and to make my people proud back on uh, back in Milwaukee on April 1st. Well, lastly, what do you want to say to all your fans, followers, and to the city of Milwaukee? Well, I hope you guys are ready. Uh, this is going to be a great show. I'm looking forward to it. I've been working so hard for it. Uh, for me, it's an honor to, you know, to, to, to fight, uh, you know, fight in front of them and also to represent them, you know, being a, a guy from Milwaukee. And um, I think that it's going to be a special night. And, uh, you know, we look forward to putting on the show and, and getting the win. So thank you guys very much for all the support. And I'll see you guys soon.